uh, November of last year, kind of when I brought back the channel, is kind of when I got hired on, um, or when I started like posting videos in earnest to the channel. Um, and so then in May, but really picking up in June, I got started working on certain projects. If you were to think about it, the work that I do with that vulnerable class of people is the meat and potatoes of the job, but it is all coordinated through an office. And then I go out and do that, but the office also needs to have certain things done for them. And that's where these uh, certain projects have come in. So working as a contractor already for this group, I then decided to throw my hat in the ring and it's it's very like my skill set these projects and so I've just been doing like things like that for them and the pay for these projects is I would say fair for the amount of work that I have to do <laughs> we'll get to that um, and it's very much on my own time. I do have deadlines, but the deadlines are, for the most part, flexible-ish. We'll get into that again. <laughs> so anyway, I am a contractor doing this, and I am developing proprietary material for them. So I then work through a project manager, essentially the person that they have in the office that is responsible for this as their full-time position. Myself, this is a side project for me. So I work on like one or two. I, as currently, there are three in the works, and the first one is the issue. So the... Oh my god. This is literally, like, it's, it's the dumbest fucking thing. Anyway, so I have three in the works, and like I said, the first one is the issue. For each of these, I make a certain sum of money, and that, that sum of money is paid out to me upon delivery of one of these projects. At that point, my work is done. Should be. Anyway, so the problems started when back in June, I had essentially finished my first project. These kinds of projects, like I said, they very much rhyme with my skill set. I love doing this type of work. So naturally, I was like, hell yeah, let's do it, like, I want to do this, it's a way to make a little bit of extra money, and then it's also a way to develop that. The other thing is, I also then have under my belt a proprietary set of things that I can say, hey, you know the things that these people do, I'm behind them. That is good experience on a resume, so all of it should be good. This project manager that I have to work with is uniquely infuriating to me specifically. I also do not believe that she necessarily enjoys me. I think she likes that I take a couple of projects off of her plate. I do not think that she particularly is my style. So, again, I have essentially gone to university for this. This job that I have is in my field, it's in my chosen field, and the other thing is that I am also very good at this kind of like behind the scenes stuff that goes with it. And so, when I 
signed on for this, I thought that the project manager was also a professional in this same field. She is not. And this is why I need to say this to somebody. And this is why we're doing a whisper ramble. And I, I'm seriously hoping that this can make you all more able to focus on my problem and have it distract from your own. So, anyway, in May, the project was in May, in June, let's say, I'm going to be generous and say that in June, this project was 90%. The way that my role is set out is that I get the project to 90%. I have a meeting with the project manager, with the lady who works in HR for whatever reason. She, she, the, the lady who works in HR, I'm not complaining over. She is literally the only saving grace for all of this. And then the two owners of the company, um, it's a husband and wife who own, uh, who run this. And the wife is a little bit more involved and the husband is a little bit less involved. He's more on like the technology side of things um, and like the business accounting side of things. I think he was like a lawyer at some point. Um, but anyway, This is where I'm like, <laughs> so we all meet when I get the project to 90% and then we hash things out. I deliver it. I tell them, okay, this is, this is everything. Here you go. Here is my, I think my document, actually I can check it here. My document.
this because in some cases I'm working directly with this material when I go out to do that sort of meat and potatoes part of a job. And so, and so, I know that like they, they want a certain something from it. So I try to ballpark it, but once I've delivered that 90%, that is where we make that last 10% of edits and changes to make it exactly what they want, or at least as close to as possible. So that is the decision of the owners. And the owners kind of delegate that decision making to the project manager, but the project manager is under direct oversight, literally daily meetings with the owners, which is problem number one. Because the owner of the company, she is also a professional in the field. She has been working in the field for, I believe, the better part of 30 years. So she knows what things should look like. This project manager has, okay, she has no professional experience in this field except for with this company. She's been with this company for six years, which is good experience for a beginner in the field. This is not an example of me using my degree to the fullest. It, it isn't. Some of the people that I work alongside as contractors do not have the degree. Some of them are in the process and some of them are just random people in adjacent fields. So it's not, it's not like six years worth of experience means much in terms of the actual sort of technical stuff. So the project manager, knowing that she doesn't have this robust body of knowledge, leans on the owners so hard and the owners can't see it. It creates this codependence where the project manager doesn't feel like she has accountability to somebody like me because she can always delegate the decision making to the owners and the owners are busy in their own right. Like the husband runs the finances and the business and all that kind of stuff. And the wife is also dealing with like clients and marketing and supplies, the little that we need, like all that kind of stuff. So then essentially having to babysit the project manager is not something she can do. So the project manager's work halts, grinds to a halt, oftentimes for months on end, because she is looking for a rubber fucking stamp from the owner. Meanwhile, the owner trusts her implicitly, which would be great if she was a professional in the field, but the project manager isn't. So the, so the owner trusting the project manager implicitly leads to a lot of bad decisions being made. And I recognize this because like I said, a lot of this material ends up showing up in cursory ways in the work that I do when I go out to work with the people that I work with. So immediately, as soon as I started the job, it was like, okay, this is workable, but it's not. It clearly, professionals haven't had much of a hand in this, or if they have, it's a, a small group of professionals and a large group of non-professionals, which it turns out it's just one professional, and then the project manager who isn't a professional, which is the wildest hiring choice I think I've ever heard of. The project manager, manager was hired on as a project manager. I think it was back in 2022 or something like that. Um, so, like, I don't know what led to it, but she's not, she's not good at what she does. And, and I feel so rude saying this she's just not good at what she does. And in certain aspects,
aspect, I can see where her strengths lie, but there, it's not in this field. It's not plainly. So anyway, all this being said, 90% of this program was, or this project was done in May and June. It was signed, sealed, fucking delivered. And that last 10% stagnates for three months. So, back in August, so, so July and August, this is at the very end of August, back in August, we finally have another meeting, and the project manager has not read a single word of my document. She doesn't say this. She pretends like she has. But the questions that she's been asking, and keep in mind, we've had meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting to, to, to work out this last 10% to make it what the owners want to see, what the project manager wants to see. But like I said, that decision making usually gets delegated to the owners because the project manager shits the bed half the time. <laughs> All the time. But so, oh my god. So anyway, the project manager, she could have asked any set of questions, but literally every single meeting, she asks the same questions. And for these meetings, that is considered my, like, paid time, and that's when we get most of the work done, granted. So, the hourly rate is not bad, but the, uh, the, the volume of meetings was getting to be point where it's like, this isn't worth my time because I keep answering the same questions. It's just a waste of an hour. So eventually I start saying we need to keep our, our meetings to 30 minutes because I need, and, and an hour isn't that long, I understand that, but this is work. And Starbucks, weirdly enough, taught me that I need to respect my boundaries when it comes to paid time and unpaid time. Namely, Starbucks is obsessed with you need to be paid if you're doing any work. And if you're not being paid, get out. Like, and that is healthy. That is a healthy work-life balance to strike. And so... I advocated for myself, and I and I said, in once the writing was on the wall that the meetings weren't really accomplishing anything, I just said, we need to keep these meetings to 15 to 30 minutes, and or write me an email, because we're not getting anywhere. And, I, of course, I use kinder language than this, but it, the spirit is the same, where it's just like, this is going nowhere. We're treading water. It's not. It's not ready. We could have gotten what they are panicking to do now done in June. It is almost the middle of October. So, in these meetings, the questions she asks are just, they're the same, and I answer them the same, and the edits that I make are mostly suggested by the owner, the HR lady that's on the call, she is the only one who is also, okay, the owner is, but the HR lady, she is also an industry professional, she has a degree, she has worked in this field in very in-depth way for, I think, about uh, 10 to 15 years or something like that. And 
she had a couple of, um, she had a, a, a baby, and she had a couple of health scares, so she works in HR now for this company that works sort of adjacent to the field. So anyway, she's a professional, so she sits in. She's also a graphic designer. So every now and again, if we need something done in that way, she'll do it. So it helps when she's in a call. She is the only person that is actually interested in making progress on this. The owner, of course, is interested in making progress on this, but she expects the project manager to want that for her. So the owner, obviously, like rightfully, because she hired this woman to manage the projects, is like, well, whatever you all think, which is great if the project manager had a brain. But anyway, so we do these little edits, and then finally in this meeting in August, it, it hits me, it's like this project manager has not read like more than five pages of what I have given her. And keep in mind, this is my motto for a lot of things that I do. I have made this document idiot proof. You can easily figure out a lot just by reading it, even if you have cursory knowledge in the field. And she does not have cursory knowledge. She has been working in some capacity in the field for a little while, so she should have some idea of what I'm getting at, but she just doesn't. And these questions get asked over and over and over again, but anyway, the HR lady was like, we need to get Ryan on other projects, so we are going to shelve this for now. They let me invoice them so I made my money, and with the expectation that there would be about another two hours worth of work on this specific project later, and I agreed to that, I'm fine with that, because it gets me working on something new. Anyway, the, ne the next two projects I'm still kind of working on, um, they're at the 90% point at this point, but of course project manager just doesn't. Anyway, so the project manager and I today had a meeting in person because I happened to be near the office. And I can't even begin to describe the meeting that I had. It was 20 minutes It's just, it's draining. Like, if, if I were a crier, which I am fully, but over stuff like this, it, I would have bawled in the car. Because it's just like... So, I, we sit down, we have this meeting, she knows that I have like a half hour at best, and I said, I can sit down with you for ten minutes, and even then she can't respect my time. So, we sit down, and she begins to ask me the same fucking questions. It's, it's like she has a list. And I... So, um, so she asked me the same questions. And at this point, the document is, is again, edited to the point where all of these concerns were addressed in the basically the first week of July. Like, we had, after Canada Day, I was off to the races editing the document. <sighs> so, 
she proceeds to ask me the same questions. And then I decide, I was like, you know what? I asked her outright, I was like, that should be on, and, and I have a knowledge, okay, sorry, I have a knowledge of this document so well at this point, because I am a professional. I have a knowledge of this document where I say, that should be on that page. The answer to that is on this page. We changed that back in August, and I am a very professional, very kind, very warm person in this setting, and in in every setting as well, but in, in sort of a corporate setting, I'm not being rude, obviously, but she clearly reads this as passive aggression, and then she decides to turn on her own passive aggression. I realize this, and I try to start qualifying. I'm like, I'm not saying you haven't read the document. I, I said this a couple of times, and the, the comments that she was making to me were honestly offside. Again, this is only a 20-minute meeting, but, like, she's asking these questions, and I'm like, we changed that in August, we changed that in July, that the list has been updated, the, the, the descriptions, the, the everything has been updated as of, and I have rough dates that I, that I do, and, and I have, like I say, I have rough dates that these happened. I can't tell you exactly when it happened, but it was over the summer, and literally in my contract for this kind of work, it says that I work on my own time until there is a deadline set, and there was never a deadline set. So I am just working as I should. If they want deadlines, put that in the contract or give them to me. <laughs> Because it's not a me problem, it's a them problem. Especially the project, especially the project man manager, where it's like, this is literally, you need to manage, you need to take a leadership role, because I'm in a follower role. If you put me in a leadership role, I can lead. If you put me in a follower role, I am going to do what I am supposed to do, and I'm going to do it well. So, anyway, she begins to make rude comments to me. The other thing is, is that in this way of me being a professional, I am slightly unorthodox in the way that I do things. I am very good. I, I, I shouldn't say I'm very good. I am incredible at what I do. Again, self-confidence is warranted here. I am incredible at this, and I do it in a creative, I'll admit, slightly obtuse way. So when she, she begins to insult the quality of my work, and I am a big proponent of assuming positive intent from people, but there is no other, like I'm not I'm not imagining this. This is a meeting that has turned into her taking a lot of stress out on me, and I don't hold this against her, because truthfully, she is quite stressed. The owners have put way too much stuff on her plate, and she is the one now that I hear who has deadlines that are I would say, literally impossible to reach. So, she's under a lot of stress, so I can see how that can affect somebody, but it also doesn't warrant speaking to one of your, sort of, I guess, subordinates in an improper and rude way. So, anyway, I told her, I was like, I think I need to give you time to read this document, because even though I do think 
things, like I say, in an obtuse way, I do a very good job of describing it to people. That first, those first couple of meetings when I was just presenting what I had, uh, had created to them, I had walked them through step by step by step by step by step everything they should, if they want to, know absolutely everything. The HR woman she knows all of it. She's read the whole fucking document. She said three times. So it's not hard. But anyway, I just, I needed to vent because eventually it got to the point where I was just like, I think you need to reread the document, become familiar with it, and then come to me with extra questions. The last five minutes of the meeting, I nearly, I nearly started ripping my own hair out because she suggested that we add things and begin removing things. And first of all, we're not removing anything. Sorry, not happening. It is, it, it looks how it should look for a reason. And the stuff that she suggests we put in should not be there from a professional standpoint. It is amateurish, and it is not. It shouldn't be in there. So, I'm not changing things. She ends up suggesting what I estimate would be about 10 hours of work. Absolutely not happening. At all. Sorry. It, it's just not. If... What I have created was unacceptable to the owners. That's a different story. But this project manager is clearly not somebody who knows what should be in this kind of thing. So it's just, it is a vicious cycle. And I already see it starting for the two projects that I'm working on right now. And I seriously try to work on developing my self-advocacy so that it does not happen in this way again. Because it's just draining, and I've let it affect me for probably the past month or two in an unhealthy way. So, this is me thanking you for listening to me gripe for literally 40 minutes. A little bit less than that, but you get the point. Thank you for listening to me toot my own horn a little bit because I needed it. I I really needed to build myself up. Thank you all for allowing me to vent. Obviously, when I encounter something like this, I assume as much positive intent as I possibly can. I don't think that this project manager is a bad person. I don't think that she's stupid. I just think that she is far too overworked and overworked in a field that she doesn't necessarily fully grasp, which would be personally terrifying for me to be put in that kind of position. So, like I said, 